Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We are going to talk about being happy and making a happier you with our next guest. She's written five books. She is a philanthropist. She has worked with luminaries such as the Dalai Lama. And uh, Lexi and her husband uh, founded an elementary school in Fisher Island, Florida, called the Fisher Island Day School. Uh, She studied spiritual paths and has a very unique perspective on life and well-being. Lexi, welcome to Late Night Help. Oh, thank you. Can we be happy in our lives today with all the crap that's going around in the world? Yes. I mean, obviously what's going on around the world is extremely disturbing. And so my meditative practice is so important for me to stay centered and create some kind of peacefulness within my own heart as I'm dealing and watching the television horrified by what's going on. But I believe that our thoughts create actions and our actions affect others around us. So the best we can do now is to be loving and peaceful in the environment we live in and around those around us and not hold on to that anger. Uh, But I'm horrified and very disturbed by the world today and what's going on. And your latest book, uh, Know Yourself, Develop a More Compassionate, Stronger, and Happier You. I can't think of a better time for a book like that. Well, thank you. You know, I, I was writing that during COVID, and I thought I really need to get this out because we all had a little more free time, hopefully to ponder some of the greater things in life and, and to think about ourselves and what makes us happy. And um, I was very anxious to get it out during this time period. I think it is needed in today's world. People are, are looking for something in their lives. And that's a big question mark to me. I think yes. at any age, people want to know their purpose. There are books on finding your purpose. Well, that's true. But, you know, I, I go back to the uh, 8th century Buddhist scholar Shanti Deva. And uh, Shanti Deva was so wise and full of compassion. And, and Shanti Deva said that whatever joy there is in the world all comes from desiring others to be happy. And whatever suffering there is in this world all comes from desiring only myself to be happy. And I think, you know, you can be happy if you're serving. You can be happy if you wake up every day with gratefulness and say, okay, whatever my situation is, how can I make a difference by smiling at somebody or showing some peace and compassion towards somebody? Uh, I really do believe everybody's doing their best. And if they knew a better way, they would choose a better way. And maybe it's up to us as individuals in this life to show them a better way. Show them that they could, you know, smile at somebody or let go of anger and and be a more loving person in the moment or be a little more present. And I think it just starts within each of us. You know, I always love the Dalai Lama. He says, my religion is kindness. Hmm. You know, and I, I think we can be a lot kinder to each other a lot more gentler. And it starts with being kinder to yourself, gentler with yourself. There's a a, a song. It's make someone happy, make someone, you know, the the song, make someone happy, make just one someone happy. I shouldn't be singing. Yes, yeah. Right. Barbara Streisand used to sing it, but she stopped because she said, you can't make somebody happy. You have to make yourself happy. Daryl, you had a... I said she stopped singing because you did such a better job. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm going to be on stage singing that song. Um, <laughs> but I think she's right. I think we have to find happiness within us. I think she's right. I mean, she's obviously right. No one can make any of us happy. We have to make ourselves happy. My mother had a great saying, you have to make yourself strong. You know, she'd say God helps those who help themselves. And so... It's very easy to go into self-pity, but the reality is we have to make ourselves strong and to develop a more compassionate, stronger, happier you starts with some kind of journey looking within, Uh, looking at yourself and being kind to yourself and taking a little time to contemplate life and the meaning of life and what it means to you personally. We get so busy in our daily lives that just to take five minutes a day matters. 
Absolutely. But I'm coming back to that word purpose. I'm sitting here with a bunch of radio guys, okay? And radio is part of their lives, but it doesn't define them. And especially, I think, for men, and maybe now more than it used to for women, what they do is what they think of themselves. And then they retire at, say, 65 or 67 or 68, and they go, oh, my gosh, and they die because they don't. Well, yeah, that's right? true. I mean, you, but you can repurpose. You know, I've had uh, conversations like that with certain people, like Gene Cernan was an astronaut. And he said his entire life he wanted to be an astronaut and walk on the moon. It was his ultimate goal. And lo and behold, he walked on the moon. And when he came back, he felt like there was no more purpose. He almost had a nervous breakdown until he could realize that he could go teach, he could go volunteer, he could go make a difference in the lives of young, aspiring astronauts, he could start a school. You have to think about what else you can do, you know, and I went through that a little bit because I had a career up front, and then I decided to be a full-time mom, and I was like, gee, I used to say, oh, I'm president of Brockway Associates, and now I say I'm a mom. I'm like, wait a minute, that's just me defining myself by what I do, not who I am. And so I'm going to be the same person whether I'm working in the corporate world or if I choose to be a mommy or I choose to be a spiritual, uh, you know, speaker or whatever. It's, it's just it, we have to deal with that ourselves and recognize that, you know, that's where we have to be kinder and gentler with ourselves and listen to what we say to ourselves, you know, positive self-talk. We, we're, a hard, we're our own worst enemies. We're too hard on ourselves. We are. <laughs> but, but, Lexi, you're still a mom. You've got yes. a house full of uh, college kids, I guess, for spring break. Right. You're a writer. You've done. You've written five books. You're a philanthropist uh, with your husband. You have it all. Can we all have it all? Well, you know, you say we have it all. I think I, my greatest lessons in life have been learning through loss. I lost my father when I was 19, and he was my wisdom teacher and my best friend, and I realized then, wow, life can be short. He died at 57, and I was only 19, and he didn't get to see me do all these things, or perhaps he does see me. <laughs> That's another conversation. But I feel like, you know, if we can get through pain and suffering, and it doesn't matter, it looks like everybody has it all. Guess what? Nobody has it all. We all have pain and suffering in our lives. We all deal with our own demons. We all deal with, you know, our own negative self-talk, or we're all too hard on ourselves. And I think if we can spend time getting to know who we are with gentle eyes and loving eyes as we look within and forgive ourselves for not being perfect because we're not. I make mistakes all the time. I'm always apologizing to my kids. I am so sorry. I, I should have been much more patient on that one or I could have said it nicer. Or I'm always learning. I'm always growing. And that's part of our human experience here. But, you know, again, with, with gentle, loving eyes toward ourselves, we can grow and become even better, magnificent people. Uh, you know, we all have that potential. And the growing, uh, you know, is something that I think seniors in particular need to take a look at because they can repurpose themselves. They can take a look and do more. Our guest is a new friend, Lexi Potemkin. Her latest book is Know Yourself, Develop a More Compassionate, Stronger, and Happier You. Check us out at LateNightHealth.com. There'll be a very pretty picture of Lexi on there, a cover of her book, and a little bit of a story about her as well. And there's so much more that goes on there. Uh, Daryl and I will return with Lexi as Late Night Health continues. Don't go away. More coming up.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright Here Now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright Here Now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. Role models. They can make all the difference. In our world today, they have never been more important. One of the nation's most successful mentoring organizations is Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles. Their mission is to assist youth in achieving their full potential through innovative and impactful programs. And no nonprofit agency does it better. Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of LA serves Jewish children, boys and girls in our local community with a mentoring program that's been going strong since 1915. That's only the beginning. This nationally known agency owns and operates Camp Bob Waldorf. Its summer camping and weekend retreat programs enrich the lives of youth throughout greater Los Angeles. Then there's a college support program and last but not least, work that helps kids all over the world through the Teen Talk app. Want to learn more? Go to jbbbsla.org. Donate. Get involved. There's no better way to make a difference. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghostwriting anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. The latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me criminally insane? Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry and of course the rock stars themselves i'm the reverend al green and you're listening to the insane daryl wayne and i said wayne insane you can find it on amazon or blackstone audio search for the latest from the greatest from daryl wayne d-a-r-r-e-l-l-w-a-y-n-e Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? (laughs) 
Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We're going to continue our conversation with uh, Lexi uh, Potemkin. Uh, Her latest book is Know Yourself, Develop a More Compassionate, Stronger, and Happier You. Um, And I don't know where this is going to go because we actually did the show and we had a little technical glitch and we're going to redo it. And I really appreciate your taking the time, Lexi, to, to hang with us. Can people be happy even when they've got all the pressure of the world on their back? Yes. I think the evidence is actually clear that um, the more we're able to shift our preoccupation from self to others, the happier we'll be. And science backs that up. And, you know, I'm thinking of the Buddhist scholar Santi Deva. He talked about that. You know, if you focus on other people and how you can you know, serve and make a difference in the world, regardless of where you are and what you're going through, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. And so, you know, you're going through a tough time yourself, but if you over-focus on that, you're going to be very, very unhappy. So if you take a moment to smile at someone or be kind to a neighbor or help someone walk across the street or carry groceries in, you'll be a happier person. It's the small things like that that you do that serve and help others that will make you happy. I was at a market yesterday and I saw a man who, uh, I think he had multiple sclerosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an, uh, an older gentleman and he was maneuvering between shopping carts and I was hoping that he'd be okay. Other people just stepped aside and I wanted to go up and say, sir, can I help you? Mm-hmm. But Something in the back of my mind said he wants to do it himself. How do you know? You know, I think you don't always know in situations like that. Um, but I think if you just check in with yourself and just take a moment and not react to the situation and look at it, you know. Like you probably knew that he was wanting to do it on his own and maybe didn't want help. But maybe you smile at him. And then Which he sees I did. that you're there, right? Right. And if he wanted help, then he would have known your friendly face and you smiled at him and he would have felt comfortable asking you, can you please help me if he needed it? But he was probably wanting to do it on his own. You probably read that correctly, in, in my opinion. And I saw him later in the market and he was pushing a cart around and yeah. you know, throwing stuff into his basket like I was. And I was thinking, as we talked about purpose in life, when you have catastrophe, I mean, that's a health catastrophe. Mm-hmm. Can you still be productive? Can you still have a purpose in life? Absolutely. I, I you know, it's interesting because I, I did this work with my neighbor. He was dying of a brain tumor. He called me one day and he said, Lexi, you're one of the most spiritual people I know. And I started laughing. I go, well, that's really pathetic because he's a lot of spiritual people. <laughs> and then he started laughing and we laughed. And he was dying of a brain tumor. Oof. Okay, so I would go over. We would light candles. I would do a little bit of Reiki with him every day. And I would just check in. How you doing? How you doing? And, you know, physically he was deteriorating. At the same time, I saw his essence, his being, just blossom. And he became like this wise old soul, even though he was very young. He was in his 50s. Oh. And he just... You know, he was there, he was doing things, and, you know, we talked about, you know, completing, is there anybody you haven't told that you loved them, you know, the hospice program kind of stuff, where, Mm -hmm. you know, make sure you complete, is there anybody that you want to call, you know, and he had a great sense of humor, you know, Uh, even to the end, he was laughing and making me laugh, you know, I remember he called his sister and 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 he said something like, "Am I dead yet?" <laughs> and she'd say, "No, it'd be a long distance call if you were." You know, and they were like laughing about death. And um, I just watched that in awe of how he kept his sense of humor. And when I went there, I felt positive. I felt uplifted. You know, even though I saw him dying, I didn't feel the sadness because he was doing that beautiful conscious work. You know, as he was dying, it was really quite remarkable. It was really something else. And I'll never forget it. It had a big impact. Of course, yeah. You know, I mean, I I think about that because I I always say the ripples of every impulse last long after you die. So his, his essence still stays with me and gives me courage. And 
you know, like two days before he died, I remember he said something, Lexi, I love you more than you'll ever know. You've been a great friend. And little did I know he was completing with me. And we talked about how important it is to complete. So when he died, I felt so complete because he expressed his love and he expressed his honesty. And so I will never forget that. That has a lasting, lasting effect in my life today. That was 25 years ago. So, oh, my you know, goodness. Oh, wow. So, you know, it depends on how you want to choose going out and dying. What would you say your purpose is? Oh, my purpose. I figure you help other people find their purpose. So, You know, I just, my purpose, or I, I would say that when I meditate every day, I just say, help me to be more loving today than I was yesterday. I'm certainly not perfect. Um you know, let me be gentler. Let me be a light. And when I walk in the world, can I just smile at people and try to make a difference in my own world? Because I am disturbed by what's going on in the world today. But if I can just, you know, or lighten somebody's load or, you know, help somebody or just make sure that I'm walking in life with some consciousness, you know, and some compassion in my heart when I see people, whether I see a child in a school or somebody at the bank that I'm going to see, or wh wherever I am, you know, or, you know, the waiter that's waiting on me, may I be kind and patient, and may I smile at that person and ask, who, you know, what their name is, They're, that's a human being, may I just, like, relate to people on a loving, human, compassionate level, may I include everybody, like we talked about, being an enthusiastic, you know, so... To me, I just, and I want to constantly work on that because it, it does, it just takes awareness. And I try to do that every day of my life by starting out with a small meditation in the morning. What about your family? You have young adult women, your, yeah. your husband. Do they all embrace your spirituality, your uh, enthusiastic uh, nature? You know, they're on their own journey. I think they appreciate what I do, but. You know, we're different, and that's okay, because I always say it, you know, um, we, we all struggle with suffering and pain as part of life. We all have our perception of life and the world around us, and it's up to us to figure out what our purpose is, why we're here. And that's why I wrote this book. I thought this was a good time as we were going through COVID to really do some inner work. Um, to help do that, but I mean, everyone has to choose that at their own time. I don't push what I do on my family. They see by the example, and it'll be in their time and, you know, in their own way. They will figure out their purpose and what they want to do. And so you don't proselytize, but you uh, you teach. Yes, absolutely. You know, I accept people for where they are because, it, you know, if they knew a better way, they would choose one. And they'll only know a better way when they want to go do the work. You know, it requires some work. Um you know, we do talk about like our thoughts create our actions and our actions affect others around us. So, you know, be careful. Or like my father used to say, be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible some people will ever read. Yeah. You know? oh, wow. And, and, and that's really profound because it's not about like, you know, talking and doing. Just, just live it. And then people will get it from there. Listen, we are out of time, Lexi. I really appreciate your hanging with us for some extra time, and we do thank you for that. Uh, the name of the book is Know Yourself, Develop a More Compassionate, Stronger, and Happier You, and we uh, we look forward to bringing uh, Lexi back uh, in the not-too-distant future. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. This is Late Night Health. Thank you, Daryl. My pleasure. And uh, thank you at home. Uh, have a good week. Uh, send prayers to the people of Ukraine. And most importantly, have a happy week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.